Humans need vitamins and minerals because they help with many enzymatic reactions in our body that help keep our bodies healthy and functioning, including our eyes and our bones. Vitamin B12, also known as cobalamin, is an important vitamin to keep our red blood cells healthy as well as our neurons, the nerves of our body. Deficiency of vitamin B12 is associated with megaloblastic anemia, large red blood cells, as well as neurological psychiatric symptoms. We will focus on vitamin B12 metabolism and absorption. Human cells cannot make vitamin B12 or folate. Vitamin B12 is present in many animal products, including meats, dairy products, eggs, and now they're also included in cereal products. Vitamin B12 in foods are usually protein bound. So we masticate, we chew the food, and then it enters the stomach. The vitamin B12 and protein complex is then exposed to the acidic environment of the stomach, and then pepsin, which is an enzyme, will disassociate vitamin B12 from the protein. During the same time when vitamin B12 is eaten, the salivary glands produces another protein called the R binder, also known as haptocorin, which will enter the stomach and then bind to the released vitamin B12, forming the vitamin B12 R binder complex. The stomach contains many special cells called parietal cells, which are the ones that produce the acid, hydrochloric acid, as well as another important substance, intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor here in green enters the small intestine together with the R binder vitamin B12 complex. Here, the complex is exposed to pancreatic proteases secreted into the higher pH of the duodenum. The pancreatic proteases cleave off the R binders, allowing the vitamin B12 to now bind to intrinsic factor. Now you form what's called the vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. So a word from our sponsors. Look, I discovered a very interesting channel with short explainers. It's called Geekly EDU. Geekly EDU have lots of different video playlists covering topics right across math, statistics, biology, physics, chemistry, and economics. If you're studying biology, you should definitely subscribe. Check them out. The link to Geekly EDU is in the description, and I'll put a link up at the end of this video. The vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex travels along the small intestine to the end called the ileum, where it is taken up by mucosal receptors. These receptors allow for take up of vitamin B12 intrinsic factor complex. The intrinsic factor is degraded in the cell. The vitamin B12 is absorbed into circulation and then binds to another uh, transport protein, a family known as transcobalamins. Vitamin B12 bound to transcobalamin is taken up by other cells throughout the body by receptor-mediated endocytosis. So for example, here, the vitamin B12 is taken up by the liver cells. The liver cell is an important organ because it actually stores your vitamin B12 for up to three to five years worth. And so if someone completely stops absorbing vitamin B12, signs of deficiency do not typically show up until two to three years later. So continuing on our journey, now that vitamin B12 is absorbed into the cells around the body, what does it actually do? Vitamin B12 and folate both play a critical role in DNA and RNA synthesis. Vitamin B12 and folate is involved in the folate and methionine cycle. 
vitamin B12 is a cofactor with methionine synthase, which help drive some of the reactions within these two cycles. The folate cycle is important for DNA and RNA synthesis, as they donate methyl groups to form nucleotides, adenine and guanine, as well as drive a reaction to synthesize the nucleotide thymidine. Vitamin B12 specifically is a cofactor in the conversion of methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA, a reaction that occurs in the mitochondria of the cell. And this reaction is catalyzed by methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. Methylmalonyl-CoA, or MMA, and homocysteine here will be elevated if someone has vitamin B12 deficiency because they're unable to drive both these enzymatic reactions. The synthesis of nucleotides adenine, guanine, and thymidine are reduced or are insufficient in vitamin B12 deficiency. And because of this, vitamin B12 deficiency will cause problems in rapidly dividing cells, such as your red blood cells and your white blood cells in the bone marrow. Classically, in vitamin B12 deficiency, what you see as a result are megaloblastic uh, macrocytic red blood cells, as well as hypersegmented neutrophils. You also see ineffective erythropoiesis, also known as intramedullary hemolysis, due to premature death of these myeloid cells. Finally, importantly, vitamin B12 deficiency causes neuronal problems, specifically demyelination, which results in many neurological signs and symptoms, including cognitive and psychiatric symptoms as well. So in summary, vitamin B12 is a very important vitamin for a number of reasons, mainly for uh, proper mature red blood cells as well as proper functioning neurons. Deficiency of vitamin B12 results in anemia, specifically megaloblastic anemia, as well as neurological symptoms and conditions, including paresthesia and peripheral neuropathy. Thank you for watching.